Good morning to everyone. We want to welcome you as we are about to begin. We believe that sufficient time will have passed. And even those who are not here as yet, they will have to reach us back somewhere along the stretch of time. So even as we, I know that from my vantage point, I hope that the police don't come up. <laughs> As we try to still keep our social distance, uh, mask as much as possible. So we have come to give our last respect, or better yet, to celebrate the life of someone who's been very close to us, Sister Grant, Mavis Matilda Grant, one who has lived, we would say, a very good old age. Um, she has surpassed the biblical juncture of 80 and she's um she went up to 85 um, i'm afraid maybe most of us who are here will not live so long including myself so of course we 
have come to celebrate with the family and of course give our condolences to them in, in the same breath. So this time we will begin officially uh, based on the program, the song that is on the program. Of course, we, we have come with the consciousness that the oldest book in the world, the book that has the most comprehensive history for humankind, the Bible, would have said that we were made from the dust, Genesis 2 verse 7. And it says, dust we are, and dust we will return. So man is as good as the dust from which he comes. So we will sing the hymn, Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. We have some singers here, which they will lead out. Yeah. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest no thy compassion, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Summer and winter. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, want to thank you for this beautiful day. We want to thank you that your spirit realized through the course of last night and has waking us up in our rightful minds where we can come to this funeral service to pay our last respect to our dear sister. Be with us as we go through today. Help us that we may bear in mind that as she, as we are, she was, and as she is, we will one day be. Help us that as we listen to your word, it may bring comfort to our hearts. Be with us as we do so again. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. We'll take our first lesson, which is from the Old Testament, Job chapter 19, verses 23 to 27. This will be done by Nadisha James. Morning, everyone. Morning. Our scripture verse is taken from Job 19, from verse 23 to 27. Oh, that my words were written. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book that they were engraved on a rock with an iron pen and lead forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and he shall stand at last on the earth. And after my skin is destroyed, this I know, that in my flesh I shall see God. 27 and last, whom shall I see for, for, whom shall I see for myself? And my eyes shall behold, and not another. How my heart yearns within me. This is the end of God's only word. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much. We'll take the tributes first by Anne Fraser, sorry, Anne Raisin, daughter, to be read by Nodia Raisin, followed by Alex Richards, family friend. So we'll take the tributes in that order. Anne Raisin, daughter, to be read by Nodia Raisin, followed by Alex Richards, family friend. Good morning, everyone. 
morning. Tribute to my mother, Mavis Grant. Uh, it's read by Nadia Rayson. She always called me by my full name and Rayson, who has migrated to the United States of America. It is with deep regret that I am unable to be here today because of COVID-19. Mama, I know without a doubt in my heart, you understand. I remember speaking to you in March, telling you not to die now. You have started your life journey with good health until sickness came along. Now you have come to the end of your journey here on earth. I cry, but I know you would not want me to cry. If you could talk to me now, this is what you would say to me. It is destiny and race. Why cry for a soul that is set free? Free at last. Mama, I miss you, but not with my head bowed low. This is a journey that we all must take and each must go alone. This is a part of God's plan for his children. You are home. Your parting has left us a void. This is a journey that we all must take and each must go alone. This is a part of God's plan for his children. You are home. Your parting has left a void that can only be filled with memories. The friendship we shared, a talk on the phone, your love, your kindness, love, and sense of humor. These I will miss forever. I am truly grateful for the time God has given you to me. Now I know you have gone to a better place. I will cherish the memories we share. You will always be in my heart. Rest in peace, my beloved mama. You will be sadly missed. I love you, but Jesus loves you best. Say something, I'm giving up on you. Sorry that I couldn't get to you. Anywhere I would have followed you Say something, I'm giving up on you And I was feeling so small It was over my end like nothing at all And I Was humble and full I'm still learning to love Just starting to grow Say something I'm giving up on you Sorry that I couldn't get to you Anywhere I would have followed you And say something I'm giving up on you And I Will swallow my pride. You're the one that I love, and I'm saying goodbye. And say something, I'm giving up on you. I'm sorry that I couldn't get to you. And anywhere I would have followed you 
So say something, I'm giving up on you. Say something, I'm giving up on you. Thank you, Alex. Such a beautiful voice. Brave young man. Beautiful. And just remember, family members, that even when others will probably never mem remember that your mother, your aunt, your cousin was alive and well, you will always have the memories dear in your heart of her. Hold on to those and be comforted, knowing that if she was faithful, and if you are faithful, one day you'll see her again. We're going to be singing the hymn farther along. We'll know all about it. Tempted and tried, we're oft made to wonder why it should be thus all the day long. Why there are others living about us, never molested, though Our New Testament 
scripture reading is taken from 1st John chapter 5 verses 7 to 13 and this will be done by Nodia Rayson. 1st John 7 verses 7 to 13. Good morning again everyone. Morning. The New Testament reading is taken from 1st John chapter 5 reading from verse through to verse 17 and it reads thus. For there are three that bear good record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witnesses in the earth, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater, for this is the witness of God which he had testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God had made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God had given to us, eternal life. And this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son and hath life and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Verse 13, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. This is a portion of God's word. We honor it by saying, Thanks be to God. Thank you so much. We'll have the remembrance by... Sanya James, after which we'll have condolences. Morning, everyone. Morning. Reading this remembrance on behalf of my sister Sanya James. Remembrance for the late Mavis Matilda Grand me, Grandma. I remember at a tender age when my grandma would come to visit me in the country. Each time she would come, sorry, each time she'd ca she came, it was like Christmas. She would always bring me gifts. Grandma, you were gifts sent from God. You were so kind and loving to everyone you came in, con in contact with. Each time you came to visit, we would sleep on the same bed and you would hug me and tell me stories for hours until I fell asleep. We would go to the river to do my laundry, and I would sit, and I, and I would sit, and you would do it all. Every time when you would go to visit your other children and grandchildren, you would take me on the journey with you. I had so much fun when you were around. My grandma was also a non-nonsense person. Whenever I'd go out of line, you would always put me right back at times with a walker from your old boot, as she would call it. <laughs> After being an adult, you were still there for me even when I had my son at the age of 18 years old and I came to live with you. You, you took care of both of us to the best of your ability. Grandma, with gifts of years came the treasure of knowing that there are many who loved you dearly. The memories you made with us will last forever. The most wonderful gift you could ever give us is a special part of you that now lives in each of us and the, and the truth you live has taught us we can only be strengthened by the gift of time for where roots grow deep memories grow forever sleep on and take care of us grandma will always be grandma yes it's for the children let me bring condolences on behalf of the Hampton South Yevonese Church to the family of the late Mavis Matilda Grant, on behalf of our pastor, elders, leaders, members of the South Adventist Church in Hampton, we want to say deepest condolences to the family of our dear sister. She was, I can't remember her being physically in church. I don't remember her being physically in church. But you remember days visiting her, we would give her communion. Very humble, very humble lady. And uh, even though she has passed the 70 years mark that God has given us and, and has gone 
15 years over, we can't imagine the pain you would feel as you're feeling as a family knowing that you have lost her because we would want our relatives to live as long as ever. Sometimes even when they're sick, we can't stand the fact that they might go. But she has gone. And what we want to say to you is that keep heart. The church is still there for you. All of us are there because it is not one person's road. It's all of us road. Sometimes me today, you tomorrow. So we all have to be there to support each other. And we remember you all in our prayers all the time. And we hope that you'll be strengthened by the fact that she was a Christian lady. And that if she was a faithful Christian, and you believe in the second coming of Christ, that one day you will see her again. So those of us who are still living, we have a job to do by making our lives right with God. So that on that great getting up morning, we will all meet again where death and sinning and sorrow and crying will be no more. I say to you, cry if you must cry because that is natural. And I say to you also, God understand your tears and your pain, but it will not last forever. God bless you. We would like to hear a little more about Sister Mavis and her early years. So at this time, Michelle Morgan Evans will do the eulogy. Eulogy for Mavis Matilda Grant. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Good morning. Ladies and gentlemen, children of Mavis, friends of Mavis. Today I am here on behalf of Anne Rayson and Alfonso James, Nikki, to give a eulogy for Mavis Matilda Grant, who passed away on Monday, the 18th of May, 2020. Mavis came into this world on the 17th of December to parents Florence Hammond and Father Harold Grant. She was the last child for her mother, therefore she was a wash belly. And as a child growing up, she was dearly loved by her older sister Rose on her mother's side, and also by her brothers, brother and sister on her father's side. She lived primarily with her mother during school time and attended the Buckingham Elementary School in St. James and joined her father during the holidays. As a child growing up, she excelled in the culinary skills and had a particular love for baking and cooking. Well, I can attest to that because I love pork and curried crab and th that's the only thing I remember about me, Miss May, because guess what? None of them, Anne, Nadia, none of my relatives can beat her when it comes to cooking the curried crab and the pork. Anyhow, she had a very pleasant personality. She enjoyed jokes and laughter. However, she did have a mind of her own and she was strong-willed. And she indicated this at an early age. She would not be controlled by anyone. Well, they say a way to a man's heart is through his stomach. And in her 20s, remember Mavis, is 86 and I'm talking about 60 odd years ago, Rainford James could not resist her charm, her personality, her willfulness and of course her culinary delights. So he fell madly in love with her and the union produced four children, Livingston, Liv, Albert, Fair, Alfonso, Nikki and Eustace Boogie. All boys, can you well imagine? Boys being active, mischievous, boisterous. You would assume that Miss May would have had a hard time juggling the demands of four boys. Well, she believed in the principles of not sparing the lot and spoiling the child. So she kept them in check and gave them enough licks when they needed it. 
It was called belted discipline, but this was when it was necessary. Needless to say, all boys are well behaved. She moved to Salt Marsh in Trelawney to be with her older sister Rose. And there she met my cousin, Teddy Rayson. He was smitten. And of course, he couldn't resist the culinary delight because we all like crab. And he fell in love with her and persuaded her to join him in Westmoreland. There she was warmly embraced by Teddy's family. My aunt Zeta, they loved her. Sometimes she and my aunt would argue, fuss, but in the next minute, don't get involved, you know, because in two minutes they were laughing with each other, cooking and washing together. Her sons visited right on a regular basis and they were also welcomed by the family. The union produced one daughter, Anne-Marie. Mavis and Teddy separated and she, turned, she returned to Over River Orange St. James where she resided in the family yard. Her son Eustace, Boogie and wife Cheryl and the grandchildren made sure that all her needs were met and she was not in want for anything. She absolutely loved and adored her grandchildren. They could not do anything wrong for her and they loved her equally. They would be at her side, she showered them with love. She showered them with kisses and when she went away and came back she always had a gift for each and every one of her prince and princesses. Her personality was infectious, always laughing, always smiling. She made friends wherever she went and was just loved by the community, young and old. In 2008, her health began to deteriorate and she moved in with her son, Nikki, and daughter-in-law, Cheryl, pet, and two children. In 2010, she gave up the pork, of course. She accepted Christ as her personal savior and gave her heart to the Lord and was baptized at the Hampton Seventh-day Adventist Church. The last time the family heard her speak was on the 30th of March. The doctor said, good morning, Miss Grant, and she responded, good morning. Not another word was uttered, and she passed away peacefully Monday the 18th of May. Anne would like to give a big thank you to her sister-in-laws, who have been there for her when she wasn't able to be there for her mother. A big thank you in particular to my sister-in-law, Chelsea, Pet. Pet, you have been a rock of support from the time Mama became ill. You have helped me with the planning of the funeral, a true daughter-in-law. You have done everything that I would have done if I was there, and I thank God for you, and I thank you. You know, somehow, the world seems a little less because she is no longer part of it. Mavis Matilda Grant, May, Miss May, tiptoed softly into our lives, almost silently. She stayed for only a moment, but has left an indelible footprint in our hearts. She leaves her sons and daughter-in-laws, Livingston, Albert, Jennifer, Alfonso, Cheryl, Chelsea, Anne-Marie, and her 17 grandchildren. It helps to know that she will never be forgotten by whose lives she touched. May our cherished memories bring comfort. May light perpetual shine on her, and may her soul rest in peace. Thank you. Thanks for allowing us a glimpse into what your mother was like. At this time, we are going to be listening to the word of God from his man servant. This morning, Pastor Dr. Deren Miller, pastor of the Pitford District of Seven Adventist Churches, is here to present God's words 
unto us, his people. I do pray and trust that he speaks to us this morning, that your hearts will be richly blessed, and uh, someone may cry out this morning, I yield, I yield. Before he comes, however, we'll listen to a song of meditation to prepare our hearts for the dropping of God's words. After the song of meditation, Pastor Deron Miller. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come, no more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eyes, all is peace forevermore on that golden shore what a day glorious day that will be what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see what I look upon his face the one who saved me by his grace when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land what a day glorious day that will be there'll be no sorrow there no more No more pain, no more parting over there. And forever I will be with the one who died for me. What a day, glorious day that will be. What a day. When my Jesus I shall see, when I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace, when he takes me by the hand and lead me through the promised land, what a day, glorious day that will be. When my Jesus I shall see, when I look upon his face, the one who saves me by his grace, when he takes me by the hand and lead me through the promised land, what a day, glorious day. That will be, oh, when he takes me by the hand and lead me through the promised land. What a day, glorious day, that will be. Thank you, Sister James, for that very warming number, very resounding one that reminds us that the grave will not be our destiny. By the grace of God, it will not be Sister Grant's destiny. So our destiny is not determined will not be determined by the grave but will be rather determined by God where you will spend your eternity I want to thank you I want to use this opportunity also to 
give my condolences to the family members of Sister Grant. It might have been less than a week or a week that I would have gone there. Um, some, maybe one of those elders and myself and someone else would have gone to visit with her. At the time where we went by the home, she was actually, I guess she was actually sleeping and that was just within the space of time that she would have passed on. Been there before, um, interacted with her. I took note that she was gifted when it comes to the taste buds. Um, not many persons can cook very, very nice, you know, you know that? Yeah, but so when you have one, we have had someone who, uh, who would have, you know, done very well in that particular area. And what I'm happy for, though, is, is that in spite of all what she would have achieved and what would have been said of her, is that she would have given her life to Christ. When at a funeral setting, when someone is being buried, um, those who are very conscious of the life beyond will want to think about what was the decision made before, for or against Christ. The Bible tells us that those who die in the Lord, that they shall be resurrected at his coming. So in the next few moments, I will relate to you from the word. Hope that it will encourage you, it will challenge you, particularly uh, it will comfort the family members. And for those who have not yet contemplated and those who are perhaps still in the process of contemplating your eternity, that this will be the tipping point for you. And so I speak to you on the subject after the last breath. And a few moments after the last breath. What happens after the last breath? Let us bow our heads forward of prayer. Loving God in the name of Jesus, our Savior, our King, the one who has conquered death, the one who has the keys of hell and of death, the one who was who died and who lives forever. We thank you and we bless you. We extol your mighty name. Thank you in a very special way for the life as lived by Sister Matilda Grant. Thank you for the way you have been with her, the children and the grandchildren. We thank you that on, while on this earth, she would have been fruitful. So we pray even as we um, show our last respect, as we put her in the grave, we ask that the memories will flood the minds of the family members, rich memories, teeming memories. But for, above all, Lord, we ask that as your word go forth, that there will be clarity and power, and there will be transformation. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. After the last breath, I want to suggest that, I want to submit that there are, there are two things in life that no one will never remember. As brilliant you, as you might be, as powerful as your memory might be, even if you, if you had the memory of an elephant, you will not remember it. You will not remember it. And uh, the first one is that you, no one here, and I challenge you, and if you can, man, you've got to be someone out of this world. You never remember the first time you breathe the first breath. So that's the first thing. So you will never remember the first breath you breathe. And the last thing is that you will never remember the last breath. You would have breathed. So there are two things. You will never remember the first breath, and you remember never remember the last breath. So my topic is after the last breath. Job, a very very character of mine. He was dying. He saw um, he saw the, the the worms taking over his body. Um, from his perspective, things were really looking bad. He started to. Uh, the flies were coming around and I've been told that whenever um, death is imminent, the flies normally pick it up even before the human beings. Job would have seen that. In fact, the worms have started. So there, 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 there was visible evidence 
that death was crawling over the surface area of his skin and and death was just uh, maybe a, 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 a you know a little knock away as it were and um, Job was thinking very deeply Job thought about life he thought about death and at one point he wished for death to come and then at another point Job said listen man even when death comes I still prefer life in Job chapter 14 and then he goes on he go he went on to ask a very pregnant question in verse 13 of chapter 14 and here is the question uh, that I put to you all he says if a man dies shall he live again that's the question and the truth be told I'm afraid none of us here has never seen a dead man come back to life and, and in fact in fact um, I tell you something if we were to be here now and we see the casket open by the James and, and, and sister James sister Grant comes up out of the thing I want to suggest that many of us will run away and maybe even to leave the preacher alone because I guess I will have enough guts to stand as a soldier and most of you will run away and even those who didn't have any foot they will fight for it and they will run away so so you ask the question if a man dies shall he live again and then in verse 14 he gave the answer he says all the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change comes I want to suggest that there are two things three things very quickly that will happen after the last breath after the last breath there is no more energy there is no more life there is no more consciousness there is no more memory there is no more hatred there is no more love you don't remember anymore I, I, I suggest to you that, that nobody will come back into your house the person will not come back into your house so you don't need to change around the furniture I suggest to you that you don't need to change anything on your body you don't need to lock up the door because the person does not know anything in fact the Bible says that the living know that they shall die but the dead does not know anything in fact the wise man says that a, a, a living dog is better than a dead lion you don't know anything at all but after the last breath the Bible tells us something very important according to Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27 the, the Bible tells us that all of us every single one of us including the baby including that which has not been given birth to the Bible says that we all have an appointment with death and, and that is so strange we all have I don't know about you but I've had doctors appointments before and I I try, always try to reach my doctor's appointment and I remember some years ago I was in a very critical stage where I was dying as it were and I went to the doctor and, and, and I mean just said I was having pulmonary embolism bilateral pulmonary embolism went to the doctor got a referral went to a particular doctor and while I was there waiting on the doctor uh, my vitals were checked waiting for the doctor just to come on and to look at me and, and based on the, ref, the referral given by the other doctor and to say all right put me on a particular medication and while I waited there for the doctor to, to come on having done all my vitals and the doctor came on the doctor looked at us my wife and I and said you know I have a medical emergency and I said doctor what kind of a medical emergency you have now doctor said you know a man died down a certain place and I need to go and check the, the man I need to check it out but we said doctor look at me you have a live man in front of you and you're gonna leave the live man and you're gonna check out the dead man who is already dead <laughs> I, I, and that was something and I you know based on that I just looked at the doctor and I walked to this office and I never entered again even though I was in a dying situation so I made my appointment with the doctor on time but the doctor did not deliver accordingly so I'm saying that to everyone who is respect of who you are your 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 pedigree whatever station you've had in life whatever your position position in life you have an appointment with death and, and, and there's something I found about death that when death has an appointment with you death does not cancel its appointment so whether you are young or whether you are old death is gonna when it comes at you it comes the only way the appointment is cancelled unless God cancels amen and God cancels my appointment what about you I don't know what you cancelled at least my appointment three times with death three times with death I, and so I know I have another appointment with that but I don't know because that doesn't give you the time all it happens 
it just comes at you and sometimes it takes you away and sometimes it gives you a little sickness and so on and prolonged sickness and sometimes there are individuals who wish they had died and some family members also wish that their members would die because they see them suffering are you talking am i talking to somebody yes that's the kind of reality so you have an appointment with that the other thing the bible says that it is appointed unto man once to die and then judgment you know what i what i what i what concerns me is not the appointment with death but what concerns me is the judgment because the bible says that we will all have to stand now before the judgment bar of god so the question is am i going to stand before god as a dead person no you're going to stand before god as a living person in fact the bible says as i close in john chapter 5 and verse 20 28 the bible says uh, behold jesus says that the time will come when all that is in the grave all those who are in the grave they shall come forth he said that those verse 29 though some will come forth unto everlasting life and some will come forth unto eternal damnation but i tell you the secret you don't have to come up in the second resurrection according to the bible you don't have to come up in damnation the bible says that when you believe in jesus then you are passed from death unto life as simple as that so the question is how far can you run from death i want to suggest that you can't run from death can you hide from the judgment no you can't hide from the judgment and someone say that well when i die i want you know something i want to hide from god i don't want god to see me nothing with the dust of me so what you do make sure that you don't bury me like this make sure that you burn my body and when you burn it you're gonna cremate it and when you do that you must not stop it here don't put it on your home you must put it in the in the sea that the fish can get it and the sea will have it the Bible tells us, according to Revelation chapter 20, that the time will come that even the dead who are in the sea, the Bible says that the sea is going to vomit up the dead that are in it, and they shall come up and stand before God. Well, if you're going to stand before God, hear what the wise man says. He says, all right, uh, in Ecclesiastes 12, verses 13 and 14, he says, let's hear the conclusion, therefore, of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Thank God that Sister Grant would have made her appointment not only with death, but an appointment with God. And when you make an appointment with God, God is not like my doctor who left me alone in his office to look at a dead man who could not speak. But well, God will attend to you. Amen. Amen. As we pray now, we pray for us, for the family in particular. Thank you very much, Pastor. And I hope that the message has come home to, to all of us. This afternoon, before I pray for the family, I just want to take, a, take the time out to console the family. Um, Sister Mavis was our member at church and I was a community service leader and we spent some good times together. She's a very nice person, nice person to talk with and she has lived her life. And even in the last moment, I still go and visit her. And I give God thanks that I know this wonderful woman. The woman that would have raised her children to the best of her ability. And um, we, the members of the Ampton Church, really sympathize with the family to know that you have lost your loved one. And I pray and hope that you live that life, that when that great getting up morning, you will behold Jesus and you'll see your mom, your grandmother, your aunt, your niece, sorry, right? You'll see her again. So on behalf of my family and the church family, although Elder Whittingham has gone through that, I want to extend condolences. We have a card that we have put together on behalf of our pastors, our elders, and our leaders, and our church family to give to the family, just to say how much we empathize, sympathize with you, knowing that you have lost your loved one. Let us pray. Our kind Father and our God, we thank you for life. We give you all the honor and all the praise that due to you, because you are God and God alone. Father, in this sad moment, death has come upon human being one more time. 
And we know for sure, Lord, that we have the comfort in your words to know that death will die one day. Father, I place before you your children, the family member of our late sister, Sister Mavis. We ask, Father, that you comfort their hearts. We know, Lord, to lose a loved one, it is hard. But to have those memories that they would have shared, I pray, Lord, that they will continue, these memories will continue to live on in their lives. Father, we pray in a very special way also that where they doubt you, if anyone should doubt you, help them, Lord, to turn to their Bibles. Help them, Lord, to turn to your words because in them they will find comfort and they will find eternal life. I pray also, Lord, that those family members who didn't get a chance to be here, I pray for them because they will be hurting, not knowing that they could not be here this afternoon. So, Father, I place them in your hands also. Father, we know the time that we are living in, that your coming is near. For those family members, Lord, who have not yet given their hearts to you, I pray, Lord, that as the message went forth, they will find comfort and they will give their hearts totally to you. Continue to surround them with your love. Continue to surround them with your blessing. Provide necessary need, I pray, in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, thank you very much. This time we will um, do the committal. So we're going to ask that the, the casket be removed from its present position and be placed right here where the committal will be done. Goodbye, Rose. May you ever grow in our hearts. You are the grace that placed yourselves. Where lives were torn apart You called out to our country And you whispered to those in pain Now you belong to heaven And the stars spell out your name And it seems to me You lived your life like a candle in the wind Never fading with the sunset when the rain set in And your footsteps will always fall here along England's greenest hills Your candles burned out long before Your legend ever wins On the margin of the river, on the margin of the river, washing up his silver spray, washing up his silver spray. We will walk and worship ever. We will walk and worship all the happy golden day, all the happy golden day. Yes, we will gather at the river, the beautiful and beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne. Every reach a shining river, every reach a shining river. Every every bread and dog, we every bread and dog. Grace or spirit will deliver, or spirit is will and provide a robe and crown. By the robe and crown, let us sing it. Yes, we will gather round the river, oh, the beautiful, beautiful river. Gather with the saints of the river, that flows by the throne. Soon we'll reach the shining river, soon we'll reach the shining river. Soon our pilgrimage will cease, our pilgrimage will cease. Soon our happy hearts will quiver. With the melody of peace, with the melody of peace, 
Thank you. At this time, we will repeat the 23rd Psalm together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou art with us in the name of God, my cup runneth over. Show me the goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And, and I will dwell in the house, house of the Lord forever. Let us go ahead in prayer before the meeting of this time. Let us pray. Oh, can I most compassionate Father in heaven, we want to give you thanks for this very moment that we're living to see you. As we just had the funeral service for our sister Mavis, and we're about to commit her bond to the grave now, Lord. I pray your only angels will mark the spot so when you come on the second time, you will raise her from life, dear Father, and she will heal you as a personal savior from sin. We the family member that we stand in love as they see her physical body for the last time. I pray you comfort them and help them to remain faithful unto you. I pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Okay. For in as much as God in his infinite wisdom, his power and might has permitted this our mother, our grandmother, our aunt, cousin, a friend, or sister, to lay down the burden of this life, we do lovingly and tenderly commit her body, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, earth to earth, with the assurance of a glorious resurrection of those who have committed their lives to Christ. Based on the promises of his word, he was resurrected. And so all those who follow him shall be resurrected. We look forward for that glorious morning when the dead in Christ shall rise and when mortal shall give way to immortality and corruption to incorruption. Until then, may our faith in him continue to be strong as we await the resurrection morning amen amen thanks we will sing we will relocate as the work may do their part thank you Come to the life of all Come to the life of all 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 the some say day, some say day. I'm going away. I'm going to leave this world. No more to roll. Some say day, oh yeah. When life is over. Some say day. I'm going away. We serve, we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels for him. Oh yes, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve, we serve. 
what a mighty God. We serve, we serve, oh yes, angels, Bobby, oh yes.
wake up in the morning till I lay my head to rest. I am blessed. I am blessed. Behalf of the family members of Sister Grant, uh, they wish to express their sincere gratitude to all friends and all well wishers who have visited, telephoned, prayed, and gave a helping hand during this time of sorrow and bereavement. And they express the thought that God will bless you all. And of course, God has given us a very, a very wonderful day. And in as much as we are disobeying the government, because we have not kept up to the 15, but from all indications, the police are not around. Maybe there are, uh, maybe there are police here that we don't recognize. Um, but God has been good to us. And we just want to, I just want to thank you for the orderly manner in which you have um, um, behaved during the, the course of this um, um, service. And I will be singing the last song. After which we'll have the final prayer. And I do have other appointments. Um, then I will go. We will sing the golden morning is fast approaching. Jesus soon will come. The golden morning is fast approaching. Jesus soon will come to take his faithful and happy children. To take his faithful and happy children to the promised home. Oh, we see the gleams of the golden morning piercing through this night of gloom. Oh, we see the gleams of the golden morning that will burst the tomb. Attended by all the shining angels down the flaming sky, the judge will come and will take his children where they will not die. Oh, we see the gleams of the golden morning bursting through this night of gloom. Oh, we see the gleams of the golden morning that will burst the tomb. There are those loved ones who have long been parted. We'll all meet that day. The tears of those who are broken hearted will be wiped away. Oh, we see the gleams of the golden morning piercing through this night of gloom. Oh, we see the gleams of the golden morning that will burst the tomb. I just ask you, just wherever you are, just to bow your heads as we have the final prayer. Just ask the, just the workmen just to give us just few seconds as we have the final prayer to go wherever you are let us pray just for a few seconds few seconds creator of heaven and earth we bless we extol we magnify we glorify your name we thank you for this moment we have laid to rest sister grant a mother aunt someone who has been very precious and dear so we ask lord that you will mark the spot and she being faithful on the resurrection morning, she along with your saints will be resurrected. For now we ask that your blessing will be upon the family members. You will hold them in your, in your arms. Continue to be with the workmen. Continue to be with them. And grant us, Lord, a very good day. And help us to remember our appointment with death. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much. And God be with you all. Amen. You're welcome.
Let it was more.